Merry Christmas, people. So here is my gift from me to you, an actual upload while I'm on this long, 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 no, doesn't seem like it's ever gonna end break. But before we get into this video, as you can clearly see, it's a new formatting, you see the background, you see my Ubel avatar, and then you're gonna be seeing the card I'm gonna be talking about to the left of Ubel. This is the new format that's going to be for card review, for fake card Friday, and when it pertains to any of our ban list videos similar to this one and the one that you watch be getting on New Year's, my actual ban list prediction if the list doesn't go up by then. So with that out of the way, this is top five hits Konami should do on the upcoming list, but probably won't too. So the first one was a huge success. It got over 380 views, tons of likes, no dislikes, and I was like, you know what? Why don't we do it again? You know, it gives me an opportunity to talk about things that should probably be hit on the upcoming list, but probably won't, and these cards right here will not be on my band's prediction, but it still gives me a chance to talk about them, so that way, when I actually put up the band this prediction, people will be like, you will master, you will master, you didn't say this card, and this card, and this card, and this card, and this card, hold on. It's in the top five cards that should be hit, but probably won't. Now, that's because it's on this list. These are cards that I think that Konami should hit, but probably won't, but they may hit. Now, the first time I actually did it, I was wrong on a couple of cards. Uh, I said that Pendulum Call should be hit, but probably won't. Kaden should probably hit, but pro should be hit, but probably won't. And Ether should be hit, but probably won't. And oh my god, all three of those cards got hit. So, it's not perfect, but hey, you know, like I said, in the uh, part one, I said, so you're telling me there's a chance. And of course, there is a chance. So, here are five things that uh, Konami should probably hit, but probably won't. But if they do, then yay, thumbs up. But if not, then heh. No surprise, so uh, go ahead, sit back, relax, listen to my soothing voice while you sip your Christmas cocoa, and we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So starting off with number five, Anti-Spell Fragrance. All right, there are a ton of people who are predicting that Anti-Spell Fragrance should be hit. And should is, a, is it a card that should be hit? Yeah, at this point, probably. Uh, it should probably be considered a just floodgate, Put it at one, similar to all the other major floodgates. But the reason why I'm going to put it on this list and not my actual ban inspiration, despite all the trouble it's caused, despite the fact that, you know, if you pretty much flip it against a Pendulum player and they're like, oh, well, I can't play you, yo, GG, or, you know, decks that are very spell heavy, when you slow them down for a turn with how quick this game is, they only got a turn to be something. If you're not being able to play your spells during your turn and, you know, you got to take it slow because of that, you might just die next turn. No, the reason why I'm saying that Konami will not hit anti-spell fragrance and may never hit anti-spell fragrance is because it's not in the same boat as those floodgates, you know, similar to Macro Cosmos and Skill Drain and Vanny's Emptiness, and the fact that it doesn't hurt everyone. And Konami's really inclusive when it comes to floodgate. If it affects everyone equally, all right. But I guess in their eyes, it's fair, and I guess it is a way to combat Pendulum. Where mecha the pendulum mechanic is stupidly broke. I mean, let's, let's not care ourselves. It's stupidly broken. This is a way to combat that. Yes. Would it be better if Konami would just hit this card and create a card that actually hurt the pendulum mechanic in itself? Yes. Because, I mean, even if you're not doing these pendulum mechanics, slowing down spells for a turn, uh, it can be uh, very, very devastating. But, uh, I mean, that really has to do with it is the fact that it's not an all encompassing floodgate that hurts everybody. When you look at the floodgates that Konami hits, they hurt everyone. They affect everyone equally. Anti-spell? Nah. If you're not playing a, a, you know, a pendulum make deck or deck that's with a lot of spells, I mean, i.e. looking at, like, Paleo's Oaks and stuff, this card does nothing. So, uh, and it, it, it's, that's, the, that's the fact that Konami probably won't ever hit this card down to one. So, I mean, it's just really a waste to even predict it. Now, if Konami does hit it down to one, then yeah, sure, awesome. That's yet another floodgate that can probably get hit. But then, you gotta worry about the pendulums, but, uh, you know, there's give and takes with every card. This card is unhealthy for the kind of game that Konami wants, you know? And a game where they're trying to promote pendulums, is it a good card? No, it's very unhealthy. It breaks them without wording that it kind of breaks them. It's weird, but... Uh, no, nah, it's just not a broad enough floodgate to warrant being hit down to one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this list. So all the people who predicted anti-spell fragrance, don't be surprised if it's not on the list. And, and uh, yeah, that is number five. So moving on. Next we have Card of Demise. So this is a card that is completely unfair. It's not, it's not. If you play a deck a particular way, then you get a super unnecessary plus 
uh, just draw until you have three cards in your hand and you pitch the rest of the cards, but, you know, uh, it's like, if I play a particular way with setting a lot of back row, I can get deeper into that deck, more back row. Uh, this card goes up and down and up and down when it comes to uh, popularity. And um, now it has completely faded out of existence. Now, should this card get hit? Yeah, probably. But, of course, we have a much more powerful and annoying card on our hands that's way powerful than card drive. But that doesn't mean that card in mind shouldn't be hit down to one. I mean, it is on healthy cards. I've seen it pop up a couple of times. Uh, but two wrongs don't make a right. That just because this other card should be hit more than card demise doesn't mean that card demise shouldn't be hit. But I think at this point it's probably off Konami's radar. Like I said, this whole list right here is just, I think that Konami should do it, but they probably won't, whether it be because it's not on the radar, they're not planning on doing it. But like I said, there can be some surprises. I would be totally surprised and happy if I saw card demise limited to one because it does deserve it. It really does deserve it. Um, and said in the right hands, it's a stupid plus. It's a stupid plus that's really unfair. But uh, I just don't see Konami hitting it right now, which really sucks because I do think that it should be hit, but it probably won't. So, yeah, as simple as that. So, have fun with more cardamized decks, just setting a lot of back row and being all sacky and happy. So, all right, moving on to the next card we have. Uh, I don't know, number three, we have Pot of Cupidity. There you go, there's the other card. So, well, we have Card Demise who's kind of fading out of existence. Uh, the only reason why it's kind of fading, and the reason why those decks that used to be play a particular way uh, switched over, is because Pot of Cupidity doesn't have the restrictions that uh, Card Demise has. Card Demise has restrictions. Pot of Cupidity, all right, banish the top ten uh, but, uh, cards of my deck face down, I get to draw two. And while some people argue, um, the community argue, oh, it's good, oh, it's bad, oh, it's a neg, oh, it's a plus. Yeah, let's, let's, let's clear this up right now. It's good. It's a plus. It's a pot of greed. And, Really, Konami shouldn't have made this card, you know? It, they seem like they're trying to make a balanced version of Pot of Greed, and you know what? Pot of Desires? You're not balanced, you're not. You know, if you want a balanced version of Pot of Desires, it's called Card Card D. You know, if you're gonna go ahead and draw two cards, plus one on your opponent for no apparent reason, then you're at least gonna give something up. But banishing the top 10 cards of your deck, that's not even a resource, that's nothing. And while they're like, oh, well, you can banish your key cards that you want, and, you know, you'll be in trouble. Like, that's all conjecture and speculation. They can banish 10 good cards and 10 absolute crap cards. But you know what's not conjecture and speculation? That did just went plus one on your ass. They literally just went from, all right, I'm going first with five cards, probably. Uh, you know, pot of desires. Oh wait, I have six. I completely null and void the draw rule. Or, oh, you went first with five cards? Well, I'm gonna go second. I already am up on you because I draw into my sixth card. Well, you don't. Pot of cupidity now has seven to your five, you know? So, it's kind of, eh, it's a disgusting card. Uh, where should this card be if it ever get hit? It should be probably be banned. Because some people are like, oh, well, Pot of Cupidity should be limited. Well, then it's just a luck sack card. And we didn't have plenty of those in the game where it's that card at one where if your opponent gets it and you don't or you get your opponent, it creates an unstable game state. It really does. You know, think about it. If this card was limited to one and in my opening hand, I got my Pot of Cupidity, but you don't get your Pot of Cupidity. Don't I have an unfair advantage over you? It literally, it's in the same exact boat as Pot of Greed. It creates an unfair advantage to the person who gets it. And while you may be lowering the consistency of it by, you know, saying you take it from three and limit it down to one, it would just create a luck sack situation. It'd pretty much be in the same boat as Snatch Steel. Like, hey, I got my Snatch Steel. You got your Snatch Steel? Nope, nope, nope. Well, here we go, you know? So, yeah, probably Cupidity will probably eventually get banned. Uh, it's probably still early and they reprint it, make some money, uh, especially with, since there's no presence of the OCG, but they're way more liberal than that. Uh, probably Cupidity will stay. And uh, we have to deal with it for another format. So yay, but eventually this card's gonna get banned. This card's not healthy at all, but hey, it's healthy for Konami's wallet, and that's all the healthiness that they really want. So there you go, people, there is number three. Moving on to number two, uh, we actually have two cards. I know it's like, oh, the top five, I, I didn't say top five cards, I just said top five hits. It doesn't have to be cards, but we actually have two in this spot. So we have Bahamut Shark and Totally Awesome. So lots of people are saying, Bahamut Sharks is going to get hit, lots of people are going to say Totally Awesome uh, should get hit, or is going to get hit. Uh, I don't think maybe one of them is going to get hit. I think another card uh, is going to take the front of this uh, shenanigans that this uh, trio does. But uh, Bahamut Shark would definitely, uh, I can see people's point where they're like, well, it's similar to Ptolemyos. You know, to to Ptolemyos did a play that wasn't allowed. You turn your three level four monsters into an infinity. Wow, you know, it got banned. 
Uh, but Hamatrak's pretty much in the same boat, where it's like, okay, well, if I have two level four monsters, I can static symmetry will summon a, a, you know, a totally awesome. Uh, that play is very powerful, really, really powerful, but I'm not sure if it's on Konami's radar right now, especially since they're the ones that kind of promoted it. They're like, when they were posting about Totally Awesome, they were like, hey, look what you can do. Uh, now, another card, of course, is Totally Awesome itself. We saw from OGG presidents that they hit it down to one. Uh, I think it's a little bit too early. You know, it's only been a couple months since that set has come out. Konami wants to earn a little bit more money. It's the big money card, you know? They'd much rather you go to the store and, you know, buy three boxes and try to get a place that is totally awesome than hitting it down to one and then you only need one totally awesome, which you could probably get, you know, from your friends, in which case Konami's not earning money. Now, is it healthy for this card to be on multiples? No. Especially when, you know, frogs and paleozoics are the top tier decks in the meta, but that's kind of what Konami wants, you know? Uh, it's not healthy for the game, but it's healthy for Konami's as well, and that's a lot of reasons why cards do not get addressed at an appropriate time when we wanted to get addressed, because it's not about us, it's about Konami, and it's their game, you know, we're just playing it, so uh, I believe that Totally Awesome was going to stay at 3 in the TCG for this list. Potentially next list with the list after that, it'll probably get limited set precedents, one is fine, and Bombit Shark will probably stay where you have your Bombit Shark, your one totally awesome. Is it a very strong play? Yes it is, but you know, at least it's only one totally awesome, especially when it comes to Paleozoic, and when it comes to Bombit Shark, we will want to be like, hey, well I survived for an extra turn, I'm going to attack an Xim Material summon yet another totally awesome. So, uh, I mean, set precedents, totally awesome, limited is a good choice by OCG Konami, let's see if we follow it up. Uh, some list in the future for the TCG. Alright, and number one hit that Konami should probably do, but probably won't. Uh, I have three cards, so last time we had two, now I have three. We have Terraforming, Union Hanger, and ABC Dragon Buster. Alright, so the ABC hits. Uh, all these cards are warrant of getting hit in some way, some shape, some capacity. Do, uh, should the deck of ABCs get a hit? Probably, probably. It, it, uh, it, I mean, definitely, definitely. It should get a hit. It should get a hit. Will it get a hit? Probably not. Uh, you know, it's pretty much the new monarchs. It's the structure deck that makes them the money, and we're going to be seeing this deck for a cool minute, a cool minute, uh, maybe at least half of 2017, where, you know, it's a way for budget to get into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, we've been seeing this from the past year, we pretty much just repeats itself, which is the 2017 structure deck. Uh, now, uh, are there potential hits that we can do to this deck? Yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of people saying terraforming should get hit, a lot of people saying Union Hanger should get hit, which we have precedence from the OCG, but they also limited Union Hanger, and people saying that the boss monster itself, ABC Dragon Buster, should get limited as well. Uh, personally, I think that terraforming should probably get hit, you know, uh, it's really the road of field spells, and it seems like as we progress, we get more and more and more powerful spell, field spells, where you're plussing off of the field spell itself, you know? Uh, I mean, when we had Chicken Game, it was literally, you know, triple chair forming with triple Chicken Game, and, you know, all those cards would even you out, and, you know, you easily be deck thing, but uh, it's getting to the point where, you know, so many different spell spells are, it's become the road of field spells, where it's like, you know, only a handful of decks can search for a level 4 lower warrior monster, but there are a lot more field spells, uh, decks that love to search their field spell with Terraforming, which is a spell card, it's hard to negate, and it's a direct one-for-one, -one, quick as possible, unlike Planet Petify, where you have to at least use your level summon tribute, and your opponent can respond to the monster much easier to spell. Uh, Terraforming is getting to be that card, so I definitely think that Terraforming getting limited would be a good choice, and I said, if Konami decides to limit Terraforming, awesome, you know, that's great, because Lately, we've been seeing a lot of decks with a lot of powerful field spells, so terraforming, getting hit, uh, just for the broad sweep of just lowering the consistency down from, you know, at least six down to, you know, uh, a minimum four, then, you know, that, that that's fine, that's fine. Uh, Union Hanger, uh, we have President from the OCG, they hit Union Hanger. Uh, I think that's a little bit harsh, I really do, because uh, it seems like OCG is kind of trying to push ABCs out, while we, on the other hand, uh, we're going to be holding on to them for a little while longer. Now, it depends on how we feel. You can either kill them off, or we can keep them around, uh, but Union Hanger limited, especially if you limit terraforming, uh, would be, I mean, completely, completely uh, uh, harsh, but with only one Union Hanger, Especially going uh, second, uh, especially with a limit to terraforming, where you only, now you only have two fill spells, one Union Hanger and one terraforming. Uh, it gets to be to the point where all I have to do is, if I go first, is just save my Twin Twist Famous 2, whatever, for your one Union Hanger. I get rid of that one Union Hanger, and you're so slow that it's not, you know, 
it's not even worth doing, you know? And especially since the ratio will be off. You know, I think that duelists would much, that who play ABCs would much rather have three Union Hangers and one Terraforming than one Union Hanger and three Terraforming. And I know that one Union Hanger is important, but, you know, you wouldn't put that many Union Hangers. So, uh, I think kind of hitting Union Hanger down to one would pretty much kill the deck off. It really would. Uh, you know, the, as making that plus is great and the equipping is great. Uh, but the hit's a little extreme, and then moving on, because I've seen a lot of people get, uh, predict that ABC uh, Dragon Buster should be landing down to one. That's another card that would probably kill the deck, where you pretty much set up with the Union Hangers, and you do all your ABC plays, you banish, and especially with Strike at three and warning, you have one ABC Dragon Buster, I hit you with a Strike of warning, you know, you're, you're pretty much done. You'd have to jump through hoops, go out of your way to, you know, make a rankful play to go into Dragoon Store Emerald to put the ABC Dragon Buster back, and, you know, you're not getting your banished monsters back, so, uh, you know, it would just be a shit fest. It really would. So that would kind of kill off the deck, too. You know, hitting these major card pieces of ABC Dragon Buster and Union Hanger down to one uh, would kill the deck off. Now, what do I think that Konami should probably do when it comes to actually, when it comes time to actually hit the fact? Terraforming should be going down to one. That this goes for everybody. I mean, just looking at Domes, they got, you know, another fill spell that pluses and it just seems like every time we turn around, if your fill spell doesn't give you a search or net you a plus, then a, a true fill spell and we're getting to the extreme where it seems like every archetype that Konami makes lately uh, pluses you in some way, so. Uh, definitely Terraforming should probably be limited down to one. And instead of hitting Union Hanger or ABC Dragon Buster, I think that each of the cores, uh, each of the A, the B, the C, uh, A Assault Core, B Buster Drake, and C Crush Wyvern should be limited, semi-limited to two. That would lower the consistency of the plays. It really would. Where, yeah, sure, you have, you know, you still have your three Union Hangers, and, but you only have one Terraforming, so that consistency is lower. You went from six copies down to four, but, you're going to run out of searches, so you can keep on activating multiple Union Hangers, you're going to run out of searches, you're going to run out of equips to do with your actual Union Hanger, you only have so many of the monsters that you, uh, ABCs that you can banish, which then, which if you tag out some of the backs that can touch each other, and of course, we already know that ABCs are a deck, similar to a lot of the decks, and you get run out of that play, Pot of Desires, at 3, 2 to 3, so with each of them at two, yeah, it's a little, you can still do it and try to get that plus one, but it's a little bit riskier now since each of your major card pieces are two. For all your luck, you can play, you know, Pot of Desires and banish two of your A's or two of your B's, two of your C's, and mm, you know. So, uh, that is a potential hit that I think that Konami can make towards um, pushing out uh, ABCs out of the top tier deck. Now, when Zodiac Beasts come out, and they, you know, they may not even uh, be the top tier deck, but I'm gonna say that Zodiac Beasts are gonna be that tier zero 2017 adjusted list. That similar to 2016 where we did an adjusted list for Pepe and TCG Konami can see that, you know, where it's not gonna be too long for Konami does an adjusted list part two where, you know, they'll probably like hit Tanky down to one, hit Momo Rat, you know, maybe even ban, you know, MX and Volker or something along those lines. So, uh, you know, and then in that case, then you can see that ABCs will still be there, you know. Uh, you know, I predict that there's probably going to be some uh, hits to uh, Pendulum's lower, more lower tier. If you're, if you're going to get, if you want a little hint to what I'm going to be predicting, lower things. You know, while we do have our best decks of ABC, Paleozoic, and uh, Metal Foes, I think that Metal Foes are probably going to get a little bit of it, and it's just going to be lower tier stuff. I don't think that the big top tier decks, the big cash cows, uh, Paleozoic with Tree Toad, and the ABCs are going to get hit this list, not in TCG, so. They can just sit back, relax, if you have one of the decks that probably just hold on to it and continue the next one out with that money. At least until Zodiac Beast come out, so. Anyway, this video is pretty much over, people. So, tell me uh, the five hits that you think that Konami should do, but probably won't in the comment section below. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, top five hits Konami should do on the upcoming list, but probably won't two. Uh, maybe we'll be doing a three and a four or a five. I don't know, but I think these are really fun additional ban list prediction videos to do where I can talk about cards that I don't think that Konami will hit, but still give my opinion about them. So when I do put out my ban list prediction and these particular cards are not on there, I can just be like, hey, look, there's a video right here where you can go there, watch that video, and get my input. So uh, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. You guys will be getting my balance prediction on New Year's. New Year's Day, that Sunday, I will be uploading the video, and it will be my actual balance prediction. I'm predicting Konami will put up the list about mid-January, right before DDDs come out, because DDDs are going to be a major a shift in impact to 
the way that uh, TG is currently playing. Uh, so they're probably just going to hit, do a couple hits, clean up the format a little. We're still going to have you know some of the best decks, beat some of the best decks, and uh, we're just going to keep it moving to uh, Zodiac Beast. So that should be fun. So uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, like it if you like this video, and if you haven't already, hit that bell for notifications to when I upload, because as of right now, uh, when I upload is kinda erratic. Um, I'm still working behind the scenes on getting myself organized and trying to get my channel back for the big updates. I look forward to that. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Merry Christmas. I hope you guys had happy holidays and got lots of presents and got the gifts. I hope that this was one of the gifts that you were looking forward to for Christmas. So yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for support, and I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.